Well, here we are. It's been three long months, and well, things have happened. Um, it might not be as much, ultimately, but it's about the best that you know we can do before the season really begins. So, again, to make things very, very clear, welcome to the 2024 Arena Indoor Football season. I hope you stick with me for the ride. We're going to be going all the way until August the 12th. So today and then the real um, season begins March the 17th. So this weekend indoor football will return on March the 17th, that weekend, with true action as preseason games do not count to me. So NAL preseason games, AIF preseason games, I'm not going to talk about those. Um, I'll probably watch like 30 minutes of each of those games, but that's about it. Uh, other business is more important as far as, as far as you know, the arena indoor scene goes when it comes to actual games. It's games that count. So today we're going to update the landscape. Um, there are some things that are still being worked on. As we all know, this is how this is how the sport works. So when something happens, that's kind of stupid. It's just it's going to linger for a little bit. Um, you know, of course, there's the always, you know, dramatic nonsense and everything like that in between and people beefing for no reason and yada, yada, yada. It's, it's dumb. It's, it's really dumb, but that, that's what makes this sport so great. The, um, the amount of craziness that goes on each and every day in it. So, you know, pretty much update pretty much from every league, um, that, we know of anyway that could be talked about today to just kind of you know get our feet wet to really start the year off correctly. So first things first, the IFL. I'm gonna go up a little bit, move myself up a little bit, and basically the IFL has been quietly going through their off season as usual. You know, they added Jacksonville, they added San Antonio, they got the Fisher's Freight, which will be in Indiana. The Dakota Bucks rebranded. We'll see how that game in Fargo goes between Massachusetts and Sioux Falls. We'll see if they can go in 2025. Depending on where they go, I don't know where they're going to be. Are they going to be in South Dakota? Are they going to be in North Dakota? We don't know yet. We'll figure it out later. Don't ask me on, on speaking of, don't ask me. Don't ask me why Massachusetts charge people to be on the field after the games. It's dumb. It's stupid. Good old, good old Jawad Yatsen, you know, just doing his thing. Just, yeah, it's whatever at this point. But basically the main thing is, is that the AFL has been taking some IFL players. That's about really the only thing that the IFL's gotten really any traction on over the past few weeks. Players have been signed to teams, head coaches have been signed, yada, yada, yada. The IFL's about as stable as they come. You know, not without their own problems, but they're stable as they come. But the only thing really that's about as controversial as anything is that the league isn't posting transactions to their website anymore um, because of, you know, the AFL stealing players. And basically, like, we're going to give you this much money, or we really promise you this, or less games this, you know, same old, same old stuff, you know that entices players from a position to where, you know, things may be, you know, better to something that could maybe be better. Who knows? So, yeah, so that's the IFL in a nutshell. Um, the NAL, well, we all know there was going to be some problems. You know, I didn't think of it at the time. I thought, you know, hey, you know, I thought three months ago, hey, things are going to be fine in the NAL. Things are going to be dandy. The, the North Texas Bulls, you know, they, they're they back, and they brought all these new teams in. And, you know, Carolina may be on an island, but they're still here and everything. But, no, I, I, I was sad and mistaken. Oh, my goodness, I forgot how bad the Topeka Ownership Group's 
and I use that term plurally, as in there are more than one, there was more than one, there have been more than one, now this newest ownership group got removed from the league on February the 15th, which is, which is what, nine days ago? So the team is being handled by the NAL, the operations day-to-day are being handled by the NAL, you know, will Topeka play in Topeka this year? Yes, question mark. Will the will this team get some owners? Maybe question mark. Uh, honestly, at this point, if you ask me, if you ask me personally, just 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 cut your losses, get rid of Topeka, redo the schedule, do whatever. You're already redoing the schedule anyway because you kicked out North Texas because they couldn't find an arena. And remember, remember. North Texas said they were going to play in Allen. They had an article. Their Wikipedia hasn't been edited because I know that there was something there. I remember. Not everybody remembers that, but I remember specifically they had an article stating, yeah, we are going to move to Allen, Texas at at the arena where that um, that major indoor uh, soccer team plays. It's not happening. League has league hasn't gotten money from them that they were supposed to get though. The arenas said, "Nah, we are not. We are not. You know, gonna sit around and let you guys play in here." So, yeah, February seventeenth, which was only a couple days later, North Texas got the boot. North Texas is a little salty about it. Try and be a little stable next time. There's a reason you took two or three years off of this thing. You should have found stability in your owners and everything and everything. Just like you should have had people who had their pockets ready to pay what they needed to pay. So with with that being said, that's really that's not even it's not even just opinion, that's just facts. Like North Texas needed to pay, they couldn't pay. Get out. That's it. So the NAL is stuck at a 16 question mark type thing. Could be seven. Could be six. Hopefully it's seven. If not, I'm fine with six. Basically, the same old stuff that happens every year in the NAL. The NAL will be fine. So, you know, there's that. On the AFL 3.0, um, honestly, I'm even more disappointed in the AFL 3 because, I mean, the NAL having teams, you know, leave because of their own stupidity is kind of expected but the afl3 has been touting themselves as you know this new kid in town that wants to be the big hot shot jock and they're not doing anything to you know just kind of make themselves look like that do they have a tv deal no does every team have an arena no and i use a question mark here because philly has a home game but honestly I just don't care at this point. Rapid City's hauling, you know, nets for other teams. Oregon's end zones. There are trapezoids. Nashville hired Eli Gold. He's not apparently he's not doing the Alabama, you know, radio calls no more either. So like, Eli Gold's gone and Nick Saban. Yeesh, Alabama. What happened, man? And the Louisville's getting some new ownership? Question mark. You know. They let their president, Tony Flott, go. Georgia, you know, my, my boy Citizen Arcane was like, do they even have season tickets? Come on. Do you have season tickets, Georgia? Let me know, Georgia. Do you have season tickets? Do you have season tickets? Do you have them? Do you have them? At all? I'm asking. If I go and look right now, I bet you they won't be there. I bet you Georgia's season tickets won't be there. I just, I just know it. It's... It's a damn shame, to be completely honest. It's been a absolute mess. But will the AFL 3.0 play? 50-50 at this point for me personally. Now, the AIF, well, I think we all knew something was going wrong at, at, because it's the AIF, you know. Um, unfortunately, I just was very disillusioned at the time because I thought, yeah, things are going right, things are going fine. But I forgot how unstable the AF is. So yeah, the instability has 
yet again reared its ugly head. The Albany Rubricators couldn't get the Albany Civic Center to bite, you know, on a deal. And now they got kicked out of the AAF, at least for this season. They're going to be a 2025 expansion. And I use quotations because they may or may not play, to be completely honest. Jacoby Jones, former NFL player, he's going to be Beaumont's OC. Brandon Nicard, who's been in the AIF for quite some time now. You know, he's been around the AIF for quite some time. He'll be the president slash CEO now. Most teams, you know, have five to eight league games still scheduled because of what happened to the River Gators. And then you see that new, nice-looking Coralville Chaos logo. They're going to be the Iowa team in 2025. They're going to be that team that split off from the Iowa Rampage in 2025. Now, the Great Lakes Arena Football, you know, league, which, you know, I, I genuinely do not trust this lineup of teams. Maybe the Ohio Boom, maybe the Battle Creek Smoke, but everybody else has not played a game yet. So the only things that have been confirmed really from the GLAF on their Facebook page, which is needing updates severely, like, please update your page, please update your website a little bit better, please, just do something. Like, we, I know this is West Michigan's league, but, like, do something to make yourselves look at least a little bit more legitimate. I'm just, I'm just disappointed at this point, to be completely honest, you know. Um, for, it, it pretty much everybody, it pretty much everything. <laughs> so, the only things have been that have been really confirmed for me that have been posted anyway are tryouts for the Boom and for the Battle Creek Smoke. West Michigan has four home games listed as usual, uh, but the first one will be against the Tri-State Bucks on March the 9th. Now again, we go into uh, the little Ticketmaster thing for West Michigan. They have four home games listed. That's going to be their four home games. I don't know about any away games. I don't know. I don't see any schedules. I don't see anything. I just genuinely do not know about what's going on in this league right now. Uh, apparently, like, maybe all the games are going to be played in West Michigan's arena. That was one thing I heard um, from a very good source and friend. But I don't know at this point. I, this is this is a this is a headache on its own. The GLAF is a headache on its own to keep track of. It was a difficult last year, and it probably will be difficult again this year. Just to be honest with you. And in the AAL two, not much really has happened. Um, the Austin Wolverines, who don't play games, they don't play games anyway. So you know, um, their owner passed away. But they aren't going to play. It's just, you know, it's really just, honestly, they're not going to play. They haven't played. I don't think they've ever played a game. So I didn't want to say that in, like, group chats or anything like that, but, uh, you know, to be kind of, you know, mean-spirited about it. But, honestly, the Wolverines have never played a game, I don't think, and they're not going to play a game. Let's just be real. They're, they're a scam team, just like the Waco Tornadoes. Um so yeah, I, I, I'm not even here for, you know, that nonsense. Most teams that are playing are beginning to announce player signings, head coaches. Um, we'll see what the Texas Hotshots are doing um, tomorrow for me personally. So that, I just gave it away to trying to get an interview with the Texas Hotshots in, but there's no way I'm going to be able to get the grapevine. There's no way I'm going to be able to get there told them, I told them straight up that I'm going to be, uh, do you stream yard to do interviews? Like, I will add you guys to the stream yard stream, to the stream yard thing or whatever, and we can do our little interview and get it out the way and everything so I can get my interview in for this month and then boom. But yeah, Wheeling, probably the most active of the bunch of teams that have been signing again. Wheeling has their own Inside the Wall show now, again, you know, with Resignalo and company, you know, and, and I mean, that, I mean the, guy, the guys in Wheeling, you know, are doing their best. Probably the AAL2 team that doesn't look like an AAL2 team the most. So, yeah, there we go with the AAL2. Not much I can really say right now because there really isn't much to say.
Um, TAL, again, not much to say either. Their league meetings were held in Dallas a couple days ago. I think it was February 19th. It said five days ago on the Facebook post. So I'm assuming he was president day. They held the league meetings. Um, more players are being signed. I have contacted Ozarks. Um, Ozarks is signing guides right now and everything like that. But that's about it. Just player signings. Um, I don't think I don't really think there has to be really too much as far as coaches and stuff like that goes right now for the TAL. So I don't know yet. I don't know right now. They're doing their thing. They have a long way until their season starts anyway. They have a little bit longer of a leeway before they start up. So, you know, can't really fault them for anything. And then the other stuff that we need to talk about, the spring league, you know, the, the Georgia Indoor Football League are playing games right now. You see the five teams there. Um, these are the same five teams that have been around for about a year or two now. They're playing games. They're going to keep going until March the 3rd for the regular season at least. I don't know about playoffs. I don't really care. I just wanted to talk about them because this is Peach State's thing, and Peach State is doing their thing, you know, getting guys up higher. They, that's what Peach State does, and they do a good job at that. The other thing is Joe McClendon starting up his NGL, UFL, whatever, whatever thing he calls it this week. I don't know what he's calling it now. He's probably called the NGL, I think. But he's using AFL team names this time. Please do not be tricked by him. Please do not give your money to him because he just scammed. We, we, we've been over this, you know, over the past couple of years now, how he's been scamming guys. I'm using his LinkedIn photo. Don't fall for it. He only has four followers on LinkedIn. Don't fall for it. Don't fall for it on his Twitter. Don't fall for it anywhere else that he posts. Because I don't I, I don't really keep up with where else he posts, but I do know he posts on Twitter sometimes, you know, and I always, you know, get on him about it. But he never responds because he knows he's a liar. So from black man to black man, can you not? Any more, Joe, please? I'm begging you. I'm begging you. Just stop. Go go find something else. Please, please stop giving this. Please stop giving this sport I love a bad name. You do this every year. So if you get scammed by Joe McClendon this year, that is your own fault at this point. We're going to talk about if he scams somebody this year when something pops up, because inevitably there might be something that pops up this year. But I'm bet but I'm telling you guys right now, if anybody is watching this video. Whenever you see this video, I'm begging you, do not fall for his scams. Do not fall for it. Don't let him promise you an arena. Don't let him promise you any tryouts. If you're a player, if you're a city you know, that has an arena, don't let him promise you anything. He will run off with your money. The fact that he has to be jailed for this nonsense, the fact that he's only gotten a punch in the face about it you know, a few years back, speaks volumes to the stuff that people can get away with. And that's just being real. So don't fall for it. I'm begging for it. I'm, I'm begging you guys. Do not fall for it this year. Because I don't want to, you know, be on a random July hot day. Because it's, it's going to get hot in here. Inevitably. In July. But don't, don't do this. Don't do this this year. Because last year it was so it was so horrifying to just find out that he had, you know, done what he had done to like Oklahoma City or something like that. You know, and he just swindled that whole town out of money and stuff like that, and arenas and stuff, player tryout money. So, like, yeah, don't you dare fall for it. If the AFL 3.0 decides to, you know, get its act together, you know, I hope it does. I really hope it does, because honestly, you know. I would be suing Joe McClendon right now if I were the AFL 3.0. And both and both are kind of similar in their own ways, just you know, failing to deliver on promises at the very minimum. But Joe's probably worse than the AFL 3 at the moment anyway. I, honestly, I'm just kind of disappointed at a lot of things, <laughs> to be completely honest, because it's at this point where it's like, I'm just ready for the games to start and not for more nonsense. Oh, man. So, yeah, I'm going to, you know, see what in the world's going to happen tomorrow. Um, 
I'm trying to think. It's they said three to six p.m. tomorrow, so we'll see. Because I'm not gonna be able to get the grapevine. I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna probably gonna tell them that. But yeah. So that's our update for this uh, week and everything like that. So again, I will come back to you in about three weeks or so to get us started with the fourth season of this week in indoor football. I'm sorry if I've sounded a little deadpan or disappointed or whatever, or mean spirited or whatever. It, it's at a point where it's time for the nonsense to stop. And you know, let's get our big boy pants together and get our act together. Everybody big boy signing out. See you in three weeks for those IFL opening games. Take care. Have a good night, everybody.